We're continuing our review of uh, magnetism and also looking at it from the CGS point of view. Now we have the concept of magnetic flux. The magnetic flux is defined as the surface integral of the normal component of the magnetic field. Uh, therefore, it is the um, field strength we can interpret as the amount of flux per unit area. So that is the definition of magnetic flux and we, sh we show it with phi, with the letter phi for flux. Uh, so the magnetic flux is defined as the surface integral of the normal component of the magnetic field. So we can uh, basically write this as flux is equal to integral h dot product with dA, the area vector. Well, this equation applies in CGS units. And if you want to write the same equation in SI, this would be a mu zero integral h dot dA is equal to flux. So that is in SI. So this is the definition of flux. And as far as the units go, we have uh, in SI uh, units, the flux is in uh, Weber's. The magnetic field is once again in ampere per meter. H is an ampere per meter. Uh, the area is in uh, meter square, measured in meter square. And we have mu zero, which is uh, 4 pi uh, 10 to minus 7. Henry per meter, if you remember. And in CGS units, the flux is measured in Maxwell's. The magnetic field H is in Ersted and area in centimeter uh, square. So that's the way to write flux in uh, CGS units. Now, if we have a uniform uh, H, if we have a uniform magnetic field, uh, what would happen? So you can see here, the area vector uh, would be pointing parallel to the normal vector here. So this is what we call the area vector. So it has a magnitude area and its direction is parallel to the normal vector n hat. So if you have the dot product between the area vector and h where h is uniform then it comes out of the integral you will get the maximum flux and what is the maximum flux? Uh, the maximum flux you will obtain here will be h times a the field strength multiplied by the area in cgs units uh, so if i have the area vector perpendicular to a uniform magnetic field h the dot product would give me zero flux uh, so in this case i would have a phi 
minimum is uh, h a cosine 90 which is zero because the angle between them is 90 degrees and in general if I have them at an angle I have the flux is for a uniform magnetic field h a cosine theta where theta is the angle between the area vector and the magnetic field h or mu zero h a cosine theta in si unit system now uh, we already talked about the conversion between uh, these fluxes but let me remind you one weber is equal to 10 to 8 maxwells so that is the conversion between these two now regarding this magnetic flux if you have a magnet that is being uh, close that is being brought closer to a coil or loop we observe that there is going to be an electrical current that will be set up uh, in this coil uh, or uh, we, we can measure a voltage or EMF uh, that will be set up uh, or induced by this uh, changing magnetic flux that's known as Faraday's law so let's recall Faraday's law uh, by Faraday's law if you have a changing flux A changing flux generates an electric current in a circuit if the circuit is completed due to an induced electromotive force that is epsilon so we show it with epsilon now uh, the induced EMF epsilon is equal to minus n the number of turns multiplied by the change in uh, flux per unit time so n is number of turns in the coil and uh, now if we're talking about CGS units the flux will be given in Maxwell time in seconds and you may be wondering what I should put for um, epsilon well in that case the epsilon is measured in abvolts all right so uh, what this is basically writing it in CGS units if you write it in SI units it's the same equation minus n d phi dt uh, this time the flux is in Weber's time is in seconds and epsilon is in volts so it's in V uh, so that is the SI picture but there's a difference in the fluxes right so flux is H dot dA integral in CGS mu zero H dot dA integral in SI so what is the conversion between uh, the electromotive force in abvolts to the electromotive force in volts uh, well that comes from the conversion between Maxwell's and Weber's uh, so it is simply uh, one abvolt or we can say one volt is equal to 10 to the 8 abvolts okay so that's the uh, conversion between these two so we now have the expression for the uh, electromotive force given in CGS and SI 
uh, units uh, separately. So we, we need to know that the electromotive force is measured in F volts in CGS uh, unit system, uh, not in volts, volts in the SI system. Now, uh, this basically comes from uh, the, def the definition of Weber basically in SI comes from the following statement a flux of one Weber when reduced to zero in one second produces an EMF electromotive force of one volt in a one turn Coil through which it passes. So that's the definition of Weber. Uh, now I should also remind you that this minus sign in the uh, Faraday's law, epsilon is equal to minus n d phi dt, that actually comes from Lenz's law, so uh, let's also recall that by Lenz's law, the induced current sets up a magnetic flux. that opposes the changing flux. So uh, that basically gives us the minus sign in the uh, in the statement of Faraday's law uh, the induced EMF is minus N d phi dt. So if the flux uh, through the circuit is increasing in time, the electromotive force is negative. So it's setting up a negative current that is trying to oppose the increasing flux. So that is trying to decrease the flux. Okay, so basically uh, there's one more point I would like to clarify here. When I say CGS unit system, uh, there are different types of CGS unit systems, electrostatic, electromagnetic, Gaussian, etc. So the, the system that we are using in magnetism most frequently is the CGS EMU system. So it's the CGS electromagnetic unit uh, system. For example, in uh, CGS static electrostatic uh, units we would have for epsilon not ab volts we would have stat volts okay so but let's not get into this so uh, basically we talked about the concept of magnetic flux it is defined as the surface integral of the uh, dot product between h and da so it's the normal component of the magnetic field um, and it is in CGS H dot DA integral and it is uh, mu zero H dot DA for the case of uh, SI units. So um, the flux can be for a uniform magnetic field is maximum when the magnetic field is penetrating the surface uh, perpendicular to it so that it's parallel to the area vector, you have the maximum flux HA. If you have the uniform magnetic field perpendicular to the area vector or parallel to the plane, then you would have zero flux. If they are at an angle theta with respect to each other, you would have 
HA cosine theta in CGS EMU or mu zero HA cosine theta in SI units. Uh, the flux is measured in Weber's in SI units, Maxwell in CGS EMU units. The magnetic field is in Ørsted, area is in centimeter square in CGS, magnetic field is in ampere per meter, area is in meter square in SI units, and mu zero has the value 4 pi 10 to minus 7 Henry per meter, if you remember. Um, we also um, Uh, talked about this uh, mu zero factor appearing in the uh, magnetic field uh, definition uh, when we have uh, the force between two poles that are being considered and you ref if you remember mu zero was also measured in Weber's per ampere meter uh, there is another unit we can use for mu zero I will get to that later on uh, so the conversion between Weber's and Maxwell's is one Weber, it is 10 to 8 Maxwell. And once again, remember uh, that um, one Ørsted is uh, 1000 divided by 4 pi ampere per meter, 79.6 ampere per meter. Uh, and we can write uh, basically the flux in two different ways now if you have a change in the flux by Faraday's law a changing flux induces an electromotive force in a circuit that leads to an induced current if the circuit is completed and you have epsilon is equal to minus n number of turns in the coil multiplied by the change in flux per unit time in CGS EMU epsilon is measured in upvolts in SI epsilon is measured in volts. The conversion between volts and ab volts is 1 volt is 10 to 8 ab volts because 1 Weber is 10 to 8 Maxwell's. So it's the same 10 to 8 that appears here. The definition of Weber is a flux of 1 Weber when reduced to 0 in 1 second produces an EMF of 1 volt in a 1 turn coil through which it passes. And once again, this minus sign comes from Lenz's law. If you have an increase in the flux, the induced current will have, will be producing a flux that is trying to oppose the change in the uh, flux. So it will be inducing a flux that is in the opposite direction. So that is basically giving us the minus sign in the Faraday's uh, law statement.